What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'll show you how to dynamically resize buttons when you resize your window with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we'll look at resizing buttons when you resize your window. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, so this is gonna be a fun video. We are going to create a couple of buttons. So we've got, you know, two buttons here that we can click and they don't do anything, they're just buttons. But the cool thing is we can resize them dynamically whenever we resize our window. And this is super, super important and super useful and uh, actually kind of easy. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So I've got a file called button underscore stretch dot pi using the same basic Kinter starter code that we always have. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So let's start out by creating two buttons. And I'm gonna call this one button underscore one, and this one will be button underscore two. And this is gonna be a button. We wanna put it in root. We want the text to equal, I don't know, button one. And no command, because we don't really need any command for this. Of course, you could use a command, but we don't really care. So this one will be button two. Now we need to grid them to the screen. So this method works with the grid system, not pack. Uh, pack is a little bit different. We may talk about that in another video, but for this video, we're gonna use grid. So let's go button uh, underscore one dot grid. And let's put this in row zero and column zero. And let me just copy this and let's make this one button two. And we wanna put this in row one, column zero. So one button above the other one. So let's go ahead and save this, button underscore stretch dot pi. Let's run this and see what we've got. So Python button underscore stretch dot pi. And we see we've got button one and button two. They're in row zero and one and column zero, and that's fine. So what we wanna do is stretch them all the way across. So first thing we could do is when we grid them, we can set the sticky to north, south, east, and west. And these are positional arguments, right? So north is up, south is down, east and west are left and right, right? Right, right. <laughs> so let's go ahead and save this and run it, see what this does. And right off the bat, it doesn't do anything at all. So what we need to do is dynamically stretch these to the width of whatever we want. In this case, the entire root. Now we can put this in a frame and size the frame a certain way. We're not gonna do that in this video. We're just gonna do this to the root. And we can do this using something we haven't actually looked at before. It's called grid row configure and grid column configure. And those two things do what they, they seem. They take the rows and the columns of your grid and they configure them. So what we can do here is, and I'm gonna come up here and do this. And let's say uh, config, our column rows and calls. And to do that, we just call grid, which is kind of weird, right? So we call grid dot column configure and grid dot row configure. And these are functions. And what do we want to configure? Well, we want to configure our root. We always put root as the first thing, right? Now we need an index and a weight. The index is the row number. So if you wanna put it in the zeroth row, you put a zero here. If you wanna do this to the first row, you put one there, right? So we're just gonna do one for now, let's say row zero, and we need to give this a weight. Now we could go also index equals zero, but we could just put zero too. Same thing here, we could put just one here, but I like to be explicit, at least for one of these. So what the weight does is it gives weight, right? The higher the weight, the more important. I guess, or the lower the weight, the more important. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Basically, what we need to do is give it any kind of weight so that it expands. Otherwise, it won't expand. If it has no weight, it just won't expand. So we're just gonna give each of these uh, a weight of one. So, okay. Now let's go ahead and save this and run it and see what this looks like. So we see right off the bat, something has happened. The buttons have stretched left to right in the way that we want, but this button on top is much bigger than this button on bottom. And if we grab our app here and resize it, it still resizes, right? But in this weird proportion where the top one's real big and the bottom one's real small. And the reason why that is, is because 
This second button is in row one, and the first button is in row zero. And up here, we row configed just zero. Now we only have one column, so we only have to do column config on one column, which is zero. So this won't ever change, right? But we could also then, uh, well, let's just, uh, let's say config row two. So we could change this to one. Now, row two is row one because down here, you know, rows start at zero. So the first row was zero, the second row was one. So we could just put a one here. And what do we wanna do? We wanna take the first row, this thing, and give it a weight so that it also expands proportionally. And these weights are the same, so they should expand the same, right? So let's go ahead and save this, run it. And now, boom, just like that, we have completely resizable buttons that will fit you know, the root container that they're in or whatever container they happen to be in. And very cool, they resize based on whatever you do here. And that's just awesome. Now, this is a little weird. If you have you know, every single button, you have to kind of like row config this stuff. So instead, we could comment this out and comment this out. The, the column config is always gonna be the same since we only have one column, right? But since these rows need to change, what we could do is create a button underscore list if you have many, many buttons that you need to do this to. And so let's make a Python list and this one will be, and we'll put in each button. So button one and button underscore two. And now let's say uh, create list of buttons. Now let's loop through the list and config each row automatically. Right, so let's go uh, for button in button underscore list, or you could say for X in button list, whatever, right? Here, so we what we need to do is config each row, but instead of here, let's create a variable called row number. And up here, let's define row number. So let's go row underscore number, and we want this to start out at zero. And then every time this loops, we need to increment it by one so that it will increase the row number. So it'll say row zero, then row one, right? Since we have two buttons. So we can go row underscore number uh, plus equals one. So, okay. And let me just comment this real quick. Increment the counter. This is basically just a counter. So, okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. Uh-oh. Button one is not defined. What did I do? Oh, <laughs> so our button list is up here. So we need to copy all of this and put it below the buttons because we're trying to do something to the buttons before they've been defined. So yeah, obviously we need to define them first and then we can loop through them. If we don't define them, there's nothing to loop through, do we? All right, so run this and we get the same exact result, right? Now this is cool because if we have more than one button, for instance, let's go uh, button underscore three and button underscore four. And then we come up here and let's just create a couple more buttons, right? Boom, boom. So this one will be button three and this one will be button four. We'll make this one button three and button four. And then we grid these again, boom, boom. This will be button three, button four. We wanna put this in row two and row three. So now we should have four buttons and we've got them all in our list. This will loop through each one, add one to the row and configure each row and make them all sort of dynamically resizable as we want. And boom, now we've got four nice equal buttons. If we resize them, ah! <laughs> They very nicely resize to whatever size our app is. Very cool and really simple. So just remember row config and call config or column config, I should say. Uh, set your index number right here. Maybe I'll put index equals just so we are very sure we understand what this is. The index equals zero, weight equals one. This is almost always going to be weight unless you want each button to be slightly different. I mean, we could play with that if you want. Let's go uh, weight underscore number equals, we'll start out with one. 
And then instead of this being weight equals one every time, we could change this to weight number. And then let's increment this guy plus equals one. Save this and run it just to see what this does. Oops, let's break out of here and run this again. You can see the top button has a weight of one. This is two, three, and four. You can see the size gets bigger as you give them more weight, right? So we're saying, hey, this button has a weight of four. It should take up four worth of space. This should take up three worth of space, two worth of space, one worth of space, one worth of space. And it'll stay in sort of proportion as you resize these until it gets too small to do that anymore. But very, very cool and pretty simple. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Kodomi.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 on membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Kodomi.com, and I'll see you in the next video.